influence over us and to us. And I believe there's at least one person this will encourage this morning. And there's a man called Ezekiel who was a prophet. And we know this well. He's been walking with God for a while, but he has this vision and he sees these dry bones. The hand of the Lord was upon me and he brought me out of the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley and it was full of bones. Among them around about and behold there were very many on the surface of the valley and lo they were very dry. Very dry. He said to me, son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, you know. Again he said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, behold, I will cause breath to enter you that you may come to life. I will put sinews on you, make flesh grow back on you, cover you with skin and put breath in you that you may come alive and you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. Verse 11 then says, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. And this is a particular time in history, but It applies today. And I believe that God will breathe life upon you today if you are dry. And I pray you'll have ears to hear the living word because it's the living word that Ezekiel has from God that is the word that does the work. It's not the bones that do the work. They are the recipient of hearing this word that comes out of heaven that the Bible says is prophesy. Prophesy just means to declare a living reality. We tend to think it's this, give me this individual word that I have for me, but ultimately prophecy is the declaration of God's living mana from above. And it comes through anyone and everyone that knows him. It's a living word because the person who's been with God receives a word. Ezekiel received a word that he spoke and the dry bones heard the word that was from heaven, not from man. Even though God used man to bring to light this word. So the Bible says then faith comes through the ability to hear a rhema word. A living word. Bread that when you eat it, it changes you. It fills you. You were once hungry and now you're full. You were once thirsty and now you're not. And in a weird kingdom way, then you get hungrier and thirstier because you've tasted of the living manna from above, which can only come from above and be influenced and released into the earth through vessels who have sat and partaken and received the Word of God. God said to me in prayer, He said, today is ordained for you to receive. Tomorrow is ordained for you to receive. Yesterday was ordained for you to receive. But today is the day that you have been ordained to receive the Word of God. That the Word of God would change you from the inside out. It would wash over you and in you. It would purify you. It would make you blameless. It would change you from the inside out that you would cry out, with all of creation, praise the Lord for I received the word today and the word has changed me. It's changing me and it's opening up the realm of the kingdom in me and to me that I may partake of it on earth. That's good news, isn't it? It's great news. Me and Maddie were talking this morning 
And I said, honey, God is outside of time. God can stop time. We know that from the Bible. He stopped the sun. So Joshua could defeat his enemies. And when the sun goes up and the sun goes down, it's all to do with time, isn't it? So God is outside of time. But he sent his son into our time to bring his reality, which is outside of our time, into our time. And then he says to men like you and me, walk on water. See, I've come to bring my realm that's outside of your physical realm into your realm that you could live from the realm I'm from in your realm. I've come to bring this kingdom of God from that realm into the kingdom of the world, that the world would see the demonstration of me on this earth because my people are actually living from another realm and they're bringing it into this realm. So they walk on water. They get zapped from one place and arrive at another place. Philip. I said to Maddie, it's like this, honey, we're having a conversation now and all of a sudden you're at the rock and you'd be like, that's weird. And there's Jay and the guys are practicing and we were just having a conversation. You're like, now at the rock. How did that happen? Because God is outside of time. God is outside of the natural. This is not logical. This is not reasonable. It's revelation. God moves and does things and created everything out of this thing called his word. And his word, the Bible says, if you know it, brings faith, which is sight. But you have to be able to hear this word to have faith, sight. Otherwise, you have little faith, you have little sight, and nothing really happens in that realm. But you're to have big faith, big sight, for that's why I came. And I came to demonstrate this other realm called the kingdom of God on your earth, which is my earth, but Adam lost it, handed it over to this guy called Lucifer, and I've come back to grab it again and then to bring it back to light. And my people are to do the same, for I've given you the authority to bind and loosen stuff and to live in a way that my son lived. And this woman of Matthew 15 knew everything I just said. And she is a dog. She is a Gentile. You see, it says here that Ezekiel spoke to the house of Israel. She's a Gentile, she's a dog. She knows stuff that the people of Israel were supposed to know. Why? Because it's never been about a promise to a physical race. It's a promise to a spiritual people. Abraham's covenant is to a spiritual people. That's why Jesus said, although you're of Abraham, you're not. You're of the father of Lucifer. You're not of my father, even though you are physically of Israel. Did he not say that in Romans? Or John, sorry? Did they not get very upset when he told them that? Mm. They killed him. What for? Telling the truth. You tell the truth, you get killed. <laughs> you like telling the truth? Be prepared to be killed. Blessed are the persecuted. Blessed is it to be persecuted for what? Righteousness. Living rightly, speaking rightly, because you know the one of truth. This lady knew truth. And everybody in the room was trying to stop her getting to Jesus. Even Jesus said, I don't really want you to know I'm here. He said to her, my bread's not for you, lady. But she had something called great faith. And she knew it was, and Jesus ultimately knew it was. And when she says those words, but even the dogs, that the crumbs fall from their T-H-E-I-R, master's table, can receive. It was the same substance on the table, bread, crumbs. The crumbs came from the bread. Jesus is the bread of life. And the Spirit is a promise of the Spirit. So if you know who you are and you're tapping into this realm, you can live with the kingdom of God in you on earth. And its resource and its food is not from the earth. You can't see it. Can you see the wind? Can you feel the wind? Can you feel the impact of the wind? But can you see it? Do you think you can feel the Spirit? The impact of the Spirit. Receive the Spirit. Hear in the Spirit. For the Word of God is Spirit, not Hebrew, not English, 
not Afrikaans, not Dutch, whatever you want, it's spirit. Jesus said, my words are spirit and life. He did not say they are Hebrew and life. He did not say they are Greek, Aramaic and life. He said they are spirit and life. And they said, wow, that's really difficult to understand. When he said, eat my flesh and drink my blood, otherwise you have no life in you, the people that he came for, firstly, Israel, said, that's really hard to understand. Why? Because they were trying to understand through their mind, not their spirit. For Jesus said, understanding starts in the spirit, the heart of man. See, if we're back to front, we're going to get the fruit of being back to front. If we're the right way round, we get the fruit of being right way round. Jesus said, if you come to me and if you're hungry, you'll never be hungry. And if you come to me and thirsty and believe in me, you'll never hunger and thirst again. Not for the things of the world. You'll be hungry and thirsting for the things of the kingdom. Then you'll partake of them because faith is the currency of my realm. And then you'll see and receive and live from the kingdom of God within you, which is indestructible, isn't it? Imperishable. It's eternal. It has nothing to do with the world. For Jesus said, I'm not from your realm. Hey, Pilate, let me give you an insight. I ain't from your realm. What's truth? Great question. Have you asked that? What is truth? The truth that makes me free. What is that? How free are we? Yeah, but how really free are you? How free do you want to be? Jesus said, why do you keep going back and getting unslaved? I came to bring you freedom. And there's no limit. What's truth? You know, a conversation I have with people and say, oh, brother, you need to know the word. You need the word. And I go, amen. What do you mean by that? Absolutely, 100%. We need the word. But what do you mean by that? Because if you've got the word that's producing a work in you which is creating freedom, or if you've got a word that actually just puffs you up and gives you information, but absolutely nothing really is going on, and then when pressure comes because God allows pressure or a test, you crumble because actually you've got words, not the word, because maybe you couldn't hear the word. But you heard words. The Israelites were constantly hearing words about farming, fishing, this, that. The kingdom of God, Chris, is like a man. It's not. It's just like it. It's not a man. The kingdom of God is like yeast. It's like it. If you run around trying to figure out the kingdom of God is like yeast or like a man, you're going the wrong way. He said it's like it. So what's the message behind the message? Jesus was always preaching. He says things that didn't make sense. He contradicted himself, didn't he? No, he didn't. It sounds like he does, but he doesn't. If you can hear the word, the message behind the message. Today, I'm communicating something to you in a spiritual language, not tongues. It's called the word of God. And I'm trying to communicate it through an English language. But the English language, what I'm saying, is not the word. You need to be able to hear the spiritual words that are coming out of my mouth right now through an English language. That's why it's not Hebrew or Greek. But what we do is we go study in Hebrew and Greek thinking we're going to know this word that sets us free. You can know logos, okay, but what you can't get is rima. So you can know the technical aspect of truth. Did God die and rose again? Technically correct. Believe that, yes. What's that doing in me? Have I received that in me that's, that's changing me? That Paul said, I want the power of the resurrection. I just don't want to know it in fact. I want to know it in faith. I want to know it in feeling. I want to know it in this reality. I'm going to receive the gospel. And the gospel is going to cause me to go, I'm not afraid anymore because I've received the gospel, the word of God that changes me. And now there's a work gone on through a word. Why? Because the man had the ability to what? Have an earring? 
<laughs> have physical things that kept his glasses on? No, he had ears to hear what the Spirit was communicating because Jesus said, my words are spirit. They are not Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic, English. They are spirit. So there's a language of the spirit and we have to be people of the spirit. So we have to be speaking the language of the spirit that we understand because we're one with the spirit but everyone else goes, that's weird, man. That's rubbish. That's foolishness. So he goes, the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. And we're all supposed to go, the cross is amazing because it's the power of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm in that because I heard it. And someone else is going, wacko. God says, give it all away. And we're supposed to go, amen, brother, awesome, that's fantastic. I heard the word, it's in me, how much do you want? And everyone else goes, hold it on to yourself, they're nutters, what are they after? It's the complete opposite reality because you heard the substance of heaven, not just some dude rambling on about information. And that's how you have to meditate when you read and receive as well, not just read for information. It's critical that you hear. There might be one thing God's going to say to you today, but you spend more time trying to write everything down. Oh, what did he say? Go back. I missed the third point. And I, oh, man. That causes confusion. It causes your head to hurt, doesn't it? Now, I'm not saying don't take notes. I take notes, but take the notes that the Spirit is saying. It could be the whole thing. It could be one thing because there's a dual thing happening here. There's a reality where I'm speaking from heaven, a macro plan, and then God is going to speak to you individually about something in your life. Now, those two things will be combined. At times, they're separate, but there's a duality thing going on. God speaks corporately, to a body, the plans he has are for a body, firstly. Before they're individual, they are for us. Then he says, right, this is how your life is going to fit into this plan. This is your individual assignment, Greg. We're typically running around for the individual assignments, not listening for the macro, which is the thing we need to really change us. And this woman, she got it. And her life vindicated the wisdom, didn't it? Wisdom is vindicated by her children. Wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. So the child lived in accordance to the promise. Wisdom. In its maturest form, wisdom is demonstration. It is not the information held in a someone's mind who has and thinks they know something because they know information. It is the ability for that knowledge to be revealed in somebody and then the demonstration of it. So it's like I lay my life down for the will of God. Why? Because I've got information? No, because I've received and heard the word. That is powerful, isn't it? Are we all feeling a sense of reverence right now? Like, it's almost like, that's impossible for me, eh? Yeah, that's good. We should actually all be going, my goodness, there's no way I'm going to be able to be in that in my ability. Are we all feeling that? That's right. Okay, it's good. I'm glad. Because I could not climb Mount Everest if God said, go do it. I haven't trained for it. I haven't prepared for it. He says, no, no, you're not going to do it. You're going to do it right now. I can't do it. It's too big for me. Who's it not too big for? So Jesus says, I'm glad you realize your weakness because until you realize how weak you are, you can never be strong. So I'm going to take you through the pathway of weakness, meaning your flesh. You're not going to be able to do this. And until you cease from your works, you're never going to find rest. Works meaning the operating system that's in you because you're trying to do it. It's not about works like I'm going to reach people with the gospel. It's the operating system. You are still driving the bus. 
And while you're driving the bus, you will never enter the rest, the Sabbath rest of heaven, Hebrews 4. But for all those that have ceased from their works, the operating systems are driving the bus and got on the back seat and said, Jesus, you drive the bus. Carrie Underwood, Jesus, take the wheel. I hate the song, but it's a good <laughs> analogy. <laughs> and it is country, come on. <laughs> then you'll always be striving. You'll always be in function, not relationship. You won't be able to see the word the right way around because you'll be thinking you're supposed to be doing it and your position is wrong. And I spoke this yesterday in being subject to God or in submission, it's side by side. It's not this and it's not this. It is side by side with God because God is looking for co-heirs. He's looking for his bride. Danielle and I do not live, I'm here, she's there. I'm not behind her and she's in front of me. We walk side by side. But can you see the pattern of authority and design of the order of the spirit of that? Because there still is a functioning order that operates even though we look like physically we're side by side. So now can you hear what I just said? Will you believe and receive what I just said? See, this is not easy, but it's simple. The simplicity comes from knowing him. If we don't know him, it sounds complex, but when you know him, you go, oh, that's so simple. When you look, you go, it's so simple. Why? Because I heard the word, and this woman heard, received, and the Bible says she has great faith. Romans 10, verse 12. Is this okay? Romans 10, verse 12. Don't you love this? For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. Think about what I just said about that woman. For the same Lord is Lord of all, abounding in riches for all who call on him. What does it mean to call upon the name of the Lord? from a heart position? What does that really look like? How desperate is that? That's a word that describes something, but what does it feel like? What is it? To cry out from your innermost being because you know you're at the end of your road. Desperation, despair, and you cry out and God comes and saves you. For out of the miry clay, Psalm 40, he lifted me. Why? Because I cried out from the miry clay. Where I was, I was in a dark hole. And he I cried, he heard, he came, and he justified me by his blood for a whole process of salvation. Not just to get me across a line, to save my entire being, to mature me into the image of the Son, the purpose of God. If I can't hear this stuff, then I'm hearing something else. And because I can't hear it, I can't see it. And what I can't see, I live differently. Did you know blurred sight is dangerous? If Jesus had led the man who he said, come here, <coughs> open your eyes and see, what do you see? He says, men like trees. Imagine if he'd left them there. He's going around telling everybody, men are trees. Men are trees. Did you know that? Men are trees. Men are trees. Men are trees. And he's trying to lead a whole following. Men are trees. And a whole lot of people that are blind would probably follow him. Did you know men are trees? Men are trees. And now there's a whole church following. Men are trees. Men are trees. Why? Because partial sight is dangerous. So Jesus doesn't leave him with partial sight. He heals him sight. Hear sight. Seeing clearly brings life. Not seeing clearly partial doesn't bring clarity of life. Jesus promises absolute statements in his living word. If I'm in the way, I'm in the truth, I'm in the life of Christ. That is not just a quick way to heaven. That is, if I'm in Jesus' way, his process, I build my church. Then I'm going to be in what? The truth. Who's the truth? Jesus. If I'm in Jesus, what am I going to have? If Jesus is in me, Jesus is life. That's what the woman had. You have great faith. You have the great ability to see 
because you've received me and you have life, kingdom life. And I said, faith is the currency of this other realm. And then she activates healing for her daughter through her faith that she had when she turned up in the room. Think about that. She turned up with it. Jesus is just acknowledging what she had. The work had been done. It's not trusting, it's knowing. Trust is what you need when you don't know. When you have faith, sight, you know, and you go after it. And it excites Jesus. When he sees a people of faith, man, he gets excited. What do you reckon, Alice? He gets excited. He says, when I come back, will I find the people of what? Oh, he's interested in faith. He said, you of little. If you knew, you would say to this mountain, on your bike, son. If you knew, if you knew, if you had, if you had. Don't hear that through condemnation. Hear that through the opportunity to have great faith. The opportunity, because it is for all, isn't it? It is not for special people, Ollie's prayer. It is for every single person who desires and asks and is desperate to know the kingdom, the mysteries of the kingdom. Jesus said, it has been granted for you to know the mysteries of my kingdom. I'm the king of my kingdom. And I've come to earth to show you and to tell you and to reveal in you the mysteries of my kingdom. It's better than this kingdom. This kingdom's full of rubbish. It's got nothing. Man, when I experienced love in 1997, it trumped the love of any person 100 trillion times over. You start to realize how conditional human love is when you receive perfect love. When you receive joy, not happiness, joy, you realize how happiness is nothing in compared to joy. That you can be, have, go through a horrendous ordeal and have joy. It ain't a happy time. You're not necessarily running around going, let's party, let's party. Ooh, it's really cool. I just lost people or this happened, but I have something inside of me that is greater than this reality because on a given day that was sanctified for me to hear it, I heard the word. And the very hearing of that word, which created the worlds, the Bible says, came into me, and the substance of that word hit my heart that was hungry through the power of the Spirit, and I am altered, and now I have something greater in me that's in the world. His name is, because he is the word. I'm amped, man. I said last week or the week before, I don't know when I said it, Two weeks ago, acceleration. I'm on this acceleration. Rodney got a Maserati. Can I say this, mate? It blew up. <laughs> it's, it needs to go to the garage. See? Why? Because it's of the temporal. It's quick. We went in it. Man, I thought the thing was going to take off. It's amazing. It's quick, but it's temporal. It broke down. You think this substance can break down? You think anybody can come and take it from you? You think the enemy can? No. Do you think any peril of sword can? No. Why? Because I'm more than a... Why? Because I've been conformed into the image of the... And he is in me, isn't he? And he wants to be in you more and more and more. So nothing, nothing, nothing can separate you from him. Romans, do you understand what you're reading when you actually meditate? This is the reality, not just words. It's a reality that Paul is bringing to light for it is his reality and it can be our reality. And it was this woman's reality to the measure she received the word. And it goes on and it says this, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? How will they believe in him whom they have not heard? And how will they hear without a crazy preacher? Come on, preacher man. Without a crazy body of Christ that are what? Gonna preach, gonna declare. Not individuals, you're all preachers. 
You're all being called what? With a voice. You're all a voice in a wilderness in your workplace. It's called to be a preacher man, a preacher woman, to bring to light the mysteries of the kingdom because you know them to people that are lost. See our identity? This is exciting. You can't sit down when you start getting revelation of the living word because you're receiving it. It's too good. Jesus said, man, you hang on to what's good because the good's good enough. I want to give you what's great. I want to give you what's of me, man. It trumps the old stuff. Yes, that was back in the day. This is a new day with new food every day. I'm putting you in the wilderness, Deuteronomy 8, because you, I want to kill this food you're eating to give you brand new food. The only way to get you off the old tucker is to take it off you. But I want the new old food. It's good. Back in 1954, well, it was great in 1954, but it's 2018, and it's a new day. And God says, I've got manna every day. It's an abundant. How much do you want? It's endless. And we're still chewing on crusty stuff, trying to live from it. You see, we're going from strength to strength, not glory to glory. We mess that scripture up so badly. Let me remind you what it's saying, okay? Now I'm freewheeling. Oh, you ready? It's saying this, okay? The Old Testament, it had glory on it. But it, it's a law. It kills something, doesn't it? And Moses put this thing on his head because he didn't want to see this glory fading, okay? The Israelites to see it, Yeah? So the Bible's saying, I'm taking you from this old glory and I'm bringing you into a brand new glory. You're not going from glory to glory. You're going from an old glory that had life on it, but I don't want you to see it fading. I'm going to a glory that never fades. Can you hear what I'm saying? We go from strength to strength to strength here. So it says, this outer man is decaying but you're going to go, if you can hear my word, the inner man goes from strength to strength to strength. More love, more joy, more peace, more rest, more patience, more kindness. How much do you want? There is no law. Galatians 5, there is no law for the fruit. So please, can we get this? If you don't hear it in a living word, at least hear the information. Because I hear this all the time. We're going from glory to glory. And what you're doing is you're setting yourself up for a fall. No, you're in the glory. You've arrived. You may not know it, but get a revelation of it and everything changes. Jesus said, I give you and my glory. So receive it. I give you my peace. Receive it through power. Woo. So you can be a people of power. Now there's a process of that. Because most of us start broken and messed up. 1997, God did a powerful work, but when I came here, I was broken and messed up, and God has put me back together again. From the song we sang, from the ashes, I'm going to take from the ashes, and I'm going to build a brand new temple. From the ruins, I'm building a temple of my Holy Spirit. So where are we at in that journey? Are we still ruins? Because, guys, we're not called to be. His love is covering our ruins, but he wants us to be rebuilt. Jesus said, I build my church. Well, who on earth is the church? It ain't flash auditoriums with 20,000 people sitting in them. It's the very people in the seats that he wants to build. And he said, guess what? I build people, and the gates of the flesh in Hades don't touch them. Why? Because they've gone from being broken ruins to strong temples. How does he do it? Through the power of his word. Not words, word. So then it goes and says this, I'm sending a preacher to preach a living word. And then he says this, how will they preach unless they are sent? God sends people to you. 
He was always sending people to his, to his Israel. He was sending them. What did they do to them? They killed them because they didn't understand them. So they chopped off their heads. And then Jesus had to come, <laughs> didn't he? I'm sending you my servants, and you kill them. So now I've got to turn up. And what did they do? So God keeps sending people. What does the church do? What has the church done over history to the apostles and the prophets? Out you go. Why? Because we don't understand you. You're weird. We like the teachers and the pastors. We get them. And we need to get them. But God gives five gifts. Imagine if Paul turned up today, would we kill him? <laughs> Imagine if Paul turns up here, man, and starts going for it. You, you're out. I saw your sin. You've had three warnings. <laughs> How would that go down with you? Maybe we need to get back to that. That'd clean up the church. Maybe nobody would be here. <laughs> Including me. Uh, he'd be here. He'd be waiting. He's waiting every Sunday. He's waiting every Wednesday. He's waiting every time. Waiting for you. Individually, in a group, here. Longing for you to want to know the mysteries of his kingdom. Which come through here. It goes on. And it says this, for how will they preach unless they are sent? Just as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news of good things. However, they did not all heed the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of Christ. You see, you can't just look at that and go, those are those other people. And just go, well, I hear everything. Then what does your life look like? If you hear everything and are receiving, you'd be so on fire, man. You'd be untouchable. You'd be, <laughs> yeah, it would be awesome. So we can't just write that off and go, that's those stupid Israelites, yeah? Because we can live from unbelief, yeah? Didn't the man say, help me with my unbelief? He actually acknowledged his true state. He said, I know I'm unbelieving. That's a powerful place, to know your true state rather than be sucked into a false one. So help me with my unbelief. I can come before you and say, I don't believe, so help me. Or I do believe, but I don't really. <laughs> and God loves us, guys. He loves us. Aren't we glad? I'm so glad that his love isn't defined by my behavior. Okay, so my behavior, my lack doesn't define his love, but he's hoping that I'll be captivated in his love, that it would change my behavior through belief because he reveals himself through himself in me. And the Canaanite woman heard these great news, this great word, and she believed at some point, she believed. The word is spirit. Listen to Ephesians 6, 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit is the Word. I love, if you take S off of Word, you get just Word. So the Spirit, Word, sword, Word, are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a spiritual language, it's a spiritual Word. You can't just read that and go, yeah, I'm going to intellectualize that and get what that is. So we have to know the frequency of this language that is of the Spirit. We tracking? It's like this. Can we hear anything? How many of us are listening, hearing like that? So when we leave here, how many of us are changed because we've heard or do we hear nothing? You see, you have to tune in. Oh, oh, oh. That's partially hearing. 
partially seeing. Oh, yes, is that right? Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's the uh, that's the central premise, right? Yeah, yeah. That's hearing. Um, uh, meets up with um. So our challenges. Do we hear the spiritual words that are spiritual thoughts that change us? If we are not being changed, I say this in love, you are not hearing. Because the outcome of hearing is faith. He puts it so simple so we know we have a reference. I will repeat, his love is covering while we grow. His mercy is great. It's not that we're bad people. We are children of God, yes. There is no condemnation in Jesus, correct? So it's okay. Can you have the freedom to tell yourself today, it's okay? Tell yourself, it's okay. It's okay if I'm struggling. It's okay if I don't understand. It's okay if really I've been walking this for 35 years, but really I've gone nowhere, nowhere. Mercy Me sing a beautiful song, and they sing a song about realizing that what you thought you knew you don't know. And it's a great day today that I've been unawakened or awakened from the reality I thought I was in that I didn't. So you can look at that two ways. You can beat yourself up and condemn yourself and let the enemy condemn yourself, or you can go, thank you. Thank you that I was blind and now I see. Thank you that I was deaf and now I hear because now I can receive this life that I've heard about spoken, I've heard about others in, it's just not me. But today is the day that was ordained for you to hear something, to apprehend you from a reality and bring you through the power of God, through the proclamation of someone that's preaching a reality that I could hear spiritual words, spiritual thoughts and be changed. Now that may mean going away and chewing on it and chewing on it and chewing on it and chewing on it like a dog. Get that bone out. And then dig it up, put it back, dig it back up and eat it. This is what meditation looks like. Not just, he's been speaking now for 30 minutes, he should have finished. That will get you nothing. Meditation gets you Everything. And I've said this before, if you can worry, you can meditate. <laughs> it's just, what are you worrying about? Meditate, worry about Jesus. So it's fully possible. Jesus said these words are spirit and life. James said, everyone must be quick to hear and what to speak. Slow. Do you know how hard that is for a preacher? What is he saying? You see, we're so quick to give our opinion. How do you know your opinion is of his and not just what you've come up with or what you think it is, either because someone taught you or you taught yourself, but you didn't have the revelation to understand what you're reading. And so you just spout it out because you're quick. No, no, that's not right. You're quick to tell everybody. But it actually says be slow to speak and quick to hear. My sheep hear my voice. Be careful what you listen to, who you listen to. I said this to Maddie this morning. I said, honey, there are four voices. There are God's, there is yours, there is the enemy's, and there's everyone else. And there's only one opinion that matters. And it ain't mine. If you can hear what I'm saying, it's not your mates, it's not the enemies, it's your Father in heaven. He will never lie to you. He will tell you the truth and the truth will set you free. If you, honey, are positioned to receive it the way heaven says, which is not through your understanding of your mind, sweetheart, it is through you seeking and desiring the revelation because Jesus said, you don't understand because you can't hear in the spirit, because understanding starts in the spirit, not in minds of man's ability to understand it in his head. That will only puff you up. Please hear this, I am a mind guy, but it's a mind that is renewed by the power of the spirit that gives you the mind of Christ. 
So how do we get faith? Who would like to answer? Hearing and hearing by the word. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2. And I just want to back up everything I've saying with the great apostle Paul. <laughs> yeah, he was awesome too. Have you ever got out of that book? <laughs> Good man. Well, it was him that says our thoughts are not your thoughts, isn't it? Our ways are not yours. So this is what Paul said. Now remember, Paul used to be Saul. Saul is a symbolic picture of someone living by his own ability, his flesh, trying to comprehend and understand God and the fullness of the kingdom through his ability. He has not yet transitioned, or he has here, but Paul had to transition, didn't he, from weakness to strength. He had to go from someone who thought he knew it all to go, I know nothing, and I have to go through this pathway and then be made strong. And I'm made strong in a strength that's no longer my strength, for he said, I strive, but I'm no longer striving according to my strength. I strive according to the power that's working in me. In accordance to what? Do you know? The transformation of the people of God. He says, I'm striving in God's power to see the people of God changed. That's my mission, is to see the church become who she's called to be. So I'm striving with this power to bring to light, Ephesians 3, the mysteries that my people would know, for they have been lost. And there's a time coming where Jesus is coming, where they're all going to know Christ in them is the hope of glory. And God is raising them to perfect the body to this perfect body called the bride of Christ. He says, I'm in labor, Galatians 4.17, I'm in labor again until Christ is formed in the church. If you don't understand Paul and his role in the letters he writes, you're probably not going to be in life. Because this is here to eat. And he's declaring something for us, but it's his reality we must come into. For he said, imitate me as I imitate the Christ. And he spoke it to the church. So there's our invitation. So here's a man that then says this for us in 1 Corinthians 2, 12. And just before this, he's been talking about no eye seeing and no ear hearing, but God has revealed it to him. It actually says them all that God has prepared through the Spirit. So here's your how-to, through the Spirit. Do you know how many times I've been asked for how-tos in the body of Christ? And you say this, the Holy Spirit is the how-to, and people look at you and go, no, no, give me the how-to. And you go, oh, they mustn't have heard what I said. The Holy Spirit is the how-to. And you can see them not hearing, going, this guy's a nutter. He's not listening to me. No, no, give me the practical one to five steps that I can do. Oh, okay, that's called surrender. That's called letting go of you. That's called before you grab your cross and want to reach the world, deny you. No, you're not hearing what I'm saying. I'm hearing what you're saying. You're not hearing what I'm saying. I'm trying to give you the pathway of life, and you want me to give you cyanide. I say to people, do you want me to give you cyanide? They go, no. I say, well, stop asking for it. <laughs> Be careful what you ask for. People ask you, and they're asking from their mindset, which is still in their way. And you go, no, here's the way of the kingdom. It's, oh, he tells us, for to us, God revealed them which means to unravel, to bring to light, okay, through the Spirit. You no longer have to ask for a how-to. There is your answer. For the Spirit searches all things, 
even the depths of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man, which is in him? Okay, so how can I know Chris's deepest thoughts? Because it's he's thinking stuff. How can I know that? Even so, the thoughts of God, no one knows except the... <laughs> so who's being commissioned to teach the church? Holy Spirit. Through what? The Spirit, the Word. It's all one line, isn't it? Spirit, 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 Spirit. Are we here to be in flesh or Spirit? Spirit. So if you're of the Spirit, you hear of the Spirit, you receive the fruit of the Spirit, you're changed. Bingo. Nice and easy. What did you say? Nice steps. There you go. Sequencing pattern. There is a pattern. Apostle first, prophet second, third, teacher. Commandment first, commission second. There is a sequencing order in God. You just need to be able to see it. Head, subject, submission, lead, follow. But can you hear the accuracy of what the position that is? Not this abusive position. See, because I'm speaking spiritual language now. You need to be able to hear, not the English. And this is what he's about to say, okay? Now we, okay, Paul and the people that Paul knows who have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, so that we, say me. 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 Say it again. Me. Say it with a real conviction. Me. me. May know. Say may know. know. Today's the day I want to know the things freely given to us by God. Not in words taught by human wisdom. Here we go. You ready? But in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual words. Look at 14. But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. Oh, those poor lost people, they never understand anything. I'm so glad I'm not that, really. Anyone that tries to live in the natural, the flesh, he's talking to right here. He's writing it to the church. It's not the lost, it's the church of Corinthians. It's to you and me. <laughs> we often so think it's about those other people. Gee, they need Jesus. Oh, I do too. Man, I need them. Why? Because it's not just about getting me across the line. It's about the whole transformation of my entire being that I would know eternal life in me, coming through me, that I'm being prepared for a marriage covenant, a reigning with Christ, and a future in the new heaven and the new earth. Wow. So then Paul says this, the natural man can't accept it because it's spiritually appraised. If you're trying to hear through your natural filters, you will never understand the reality that's being declared, which means you're not receiving the word that's going to change you. Okay, but he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he will instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. You can't claim the mind of Christ unless you are hearing the spiritual language that are coming through the way of the Spirit. You can't just claim stuff and go, I'm in it and not have the reality of it that's changing you. It's called hypocrisy. So think about it, you have like this. You have the opportunity more and more and more to have the full mind of Christ if your mind is being renewed by the power of God through the living word that you're able to hear. Then you're living out what you've heard and received and there is no hypocrisy, there is no gap. So we have the potential to have the full mind of Christ. We can't claim it and grab it now and then walk away and still think like a child, act like a child, reason like a child. You can't be selfish if you have the full mind of Christ. It's impossible. Did Jesus, was Jesus selfish? 
Did he have his own mind? So it's impossible. Why? Because once your mind is renewed, it is renewed. It doesn't go back. <laughs> it's not in, out. It is. I have renewed your mind. So as we are hearing, because we are what? People of spirit, yes. We may be infants, that's okay. We may be five years old in the true spiritual reality. We might be five minutes. We might be 50 years. The evidence will show, okay? So just think of like this in the physical too. I have two beautiful daughters and they do not yet know what, we would hope they would know. They don't know mathematics to this level. They know mathematics to that level. I'm not bashing them over the head because they don't know mathematics here because they're 12 and nine. This is like high school stuff. We work with them here to get them here, so gradually they go precept by precept, yeah? So this is what God's saying. As we are able to truly hear the spiritual Reality that Jesus has brought to the earth and receive it through his power. My mind is then renewed. Now I have the mind of Christ. Now I can see, I have faith, and I think the way I'm supposed to think. I no longer think poorly of myself. I'm no longer a slave holding, trying to protect what I have. I release my life. I'm no longer selfish, I'm selfless. The brokenness is healed. Jesus came to heal the brokenhearted. My heart was broken in 1997. He healed it, that it would never be broken again. Why? Because I gave it to the one that would never break it. I learned my lesson not to give it to a woman or a child or something that I could lose. So I gave my new heart to the one who said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I will always be with you. You can trust me with your heart, son. Beautiful. Why? So then you can grow. And you can be like the tree that's planted by the waterside, Psalm 1. And you can be a strong tree. You can be a pillar that supports the truth on the earth. A pillar that supports what God is doing on the earth. For you are being built as a pillar, as a house, as a living stone, as a spiritual priesthood. Why? Because I can hear the word. Hebrews 11.3. By faith, sight, we understand that everything that we're in was created by what? The word of Christ. Faith comes through the ability to hear the word. My sheep hear my voice. You may be just a little lamb, but you're of the shepherd. Can you hear that today? And it's okay to be a lamb. You may be a full-on sheep. We're, <laughs> we're all in the family, aren't we? The lamb comes from a sheep. It's connected. It's the same kind. And it grows. But there's a way in which we must grow. The internal building work of the church. I will build my church. I, Jesus, will build my church. Doesn't come through the physical miracle in the sense of you can have your arm healed and still not be built and not be changed. Okay? Jesus fed people. He took loaves and fish and fed them, and then they said, show us another miracle so we'll believe. So you can see signs and wonders and all that stuff and never be built. 
on the inside. You can be a person that lays hands on sick people and still never have joy in you. Never have a peace that guards your heart and mind. You can still be running around all over the planet being in absolute stress and see signs and wonders and see God's move. It's still God doing. It's just that I'm not in this other reality that he called me to be in. That's the pattern, isn't it? Jesus comes and he talks to these guys. Let's just quickly go there and I'll wrap it because I've said enough, I think. But I do want to give you this because this is just a picture of what I'm talking about through Christ. This is in Mark 8, 14. And they had forgotten to take bread and did not have more than one loaf in the boat with them. And he was giving orders to them saying, watch out, watch, see. What did he say to the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane? Watch with me. What were they doing? (laughs) What did he give them just before they went in there? Communion. What's communion? Bread and juice and wine, or is it Christ? So how come they weren't awake if they just partook of Christ? And when Christ asked them to be awake, they were asleep. Because their flesh was... See the power of being able to hear the word? Jesus can be right in front of you talking to you and you still can't hear him. Watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. They began to discuss one another the fact that they had no bread. (laughs) Jesus, aware of this, he's aware of all things, isn't he? Said to them, why do you discuss the fact that you have no bread? Do you not yet see or understand faith, sight, or understand? Do you have a hardened heart? Where does understanding start? In the heart. If your heart is hardened, you can't hear or see. That's why Jesus comes to heal the broken hearted. You may have an offense that you're holding on to, And it's hardening your heart. So he wants to come and set you free from that so you can hear and see. It could just be pride. You've learned to grow up to depend on you and to do everything yourself because you had to maybe to survive. And God's like coming, that's not going to cut it with me. I need to be that. I don't know. But he says to his disciples, having eyes, do you not see And having ears, do you not hear? Do you not remember when I broke the five loaves of the 5,000, how many baskets full there were and how many you picked up? More than enough. They said to him, 12, when I broke the seven for the 4,000, how many large baskets full of broken pieces did you pick up? They said, seven. Do you not yet understand I'm not talking about bread? I'm talking about something that if you listen to it called the teaching of the Pharisee, the false way, you're going to hear a false report, believe it, and then live a false way. You'll live a counterfeit way of the real deal because you couldn't hear the truth. You heard something, got confused, and now you're hearing something different. Now you speak of it, now you live it. Aren't you grateful? I'm so grateful that the Holy Spirit, like Jesus was with the disciples, never left them. He said, I'm not going to leave you in this state of stupor. (laughs) Because I've come, believe it or not, you guys are the (laughs) A-team. You are the A-team. There is no B option here. I've got to work with what my father gave me. My father gave me you lot. <laughs> you know what? He's given you me, and he's given you to me and me to you. And we're the A team in progress. Hey? We're not the Z team, but we need to learn and grow. We can no longer think like a Z team, we need to think like an A team and bring our A game, which means we all need to be in the same process. Otherwise, 
You're going to hear things today, and you're going to hear things that are not said, and then you're going to go, oh, he said this, and he said that, or you'll come up with an own argument, and you'll go, what are you even talking about? Can you hear? And then you're off, and you have a perception of something that you said was true, and now you're going around saying, blind men are like, uh, sorry, men are like trees. Really? Yeah. I don't know, so I'll believe that. Okay, that's good. And our knowledge comes from man. Mark 6 says this, and they've just been in the boat with him. He says, for they had not gained, he calms the waves and stuff, and they're like panicking. He says this, for they had not gained any insight from the incident of the loaves, but their heart was hardened. So through the miracle in John 6, and now the Gospels are feeding the 5,000, what was the purpose of the miracle? Was it just to give people food? It was to give them insight. Jesus does all that to bring them to the place where he says, I'm the food. The miracle is to lead you to me. That's just temporal stuff. And you've had your fill. I want to give you eternal food that will never run dry, never run out. Look what I can do with five loaves and two fish. How much more do you want the eternal food? Come to me and I give you rest. He said, if those people that I'd done the miracles in their cities, they would have come to me. This is what prefaces, come to me and I'll give you rest. But they just wanted the miracle. And then we're off. The purpose of signs and wonders is to bring you to the Christ that you would then not stop working for food that perishes and receive the eternal food that is promised. But it can only come through hearing. So Father, give us ears to hear. You've given us ears to hear because you've given us the Holy Spirit. You've given it to us. You've granted us to know the mysteries. So, Father, help us today for you love us. Help us to hear your living mana that is not of earth, but it is of spirit. Holy Spirit, as we sit with you, tune in the frequency that we can hear with clarity and receive and believe a word that performs a work in us. That we would imitate you as this happens as Paul and his team imitate the Christ. Father, that we would be one. And as a family, we would love one another into this position. That love would cover wrong mindsets, wrong attitudes, our flesh, because love can but love would also lead us into surrender and submission that we would know the truth that sets us free and stop playing religious games and rituals and traditions that make us feel good but do nothing on the inside of us. For your heart is to bring unto you a bride that would marry your boy. Perfection looking at perfection on that day. May we not be like the people who say, no, I just got married when the purpose of marriage is to bring us to that point of the wedding feast. May we truly understand your ways, Father, that are higher and greater but are knowable through the power of the agency of your Holy Spirit who you have sent to lead us into all truth. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.
there's anything that we need prayer for.